Hello everyone, welcome to Law Excellence IAS Kala Mains Answer Writing Program Season 3 History Week. In this session, we will be discussing a question that was asked in the year 2018. And the question is, the Bhakti movement received a remarkable reorientation with the advent of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu discuss. And this question was asked for 15 marks and you have to write within 250 words. And the syllabus mapping is, it comes under GS paper 1, history, art and culture. And the topic is salient aspects of art, architecture, literature form from ancient to modern times. Now, we all knew that Bhakti movement is a socio-religious reform movement during medieval India. And it is an important event in the socio-cultural history of India. Now, what is Bhakti movement? Basically, Bhakti movement is a defensive response from Hinduism to counter the advent of Islam. Now, in this question, we have two important components. In one component, you have to write the significant teachings and contributions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and how it tried to reorient the Bhakti movement. This is one component. And the other component is you have to write the nature and features of the Bhakti movement. Without knowing the nature and features of the Bhakti movement, you can't establish how it got reoriented with the advent of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the directive given is discuss. What is this? What is the meaning of discuss? It is nothing but giving a multiple views or multiple perspectives about a particular issue so that we give a holistic aspect or holistic understanding of that particular issue. That is what discuss. Okay. Now we will see how to structure our answer. The first thing we have discussed before also, we have to categorize our answer into three types, introduction, content and conclusion. In an introduction, we will write in brief what exactly this Bhakti movement is in a very broader perspective. Right? Then we will also try to establish the role the Gurus played because the question is about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in Bhakti movement, one of the important feature of Bhakti movement, Gurus play a very significant role in the process of providing bhakti or devotion towards the people. So we have to establish the role of gurus in the process of this bhakti path, which is a crucial thing in bhakti movement. This is what introduction. And next in content, of course, it is for uh, 15 marks and you have to write within 250 words. We will see we have to be a little more elaborative when you write content. Now you have to write something in brief with respect to the origin and spread of this bhakti movement, where it got originated and who was the founder of it. And you also you have to establish where it got really spread. Okay. Next, you also have to mention about its major exponents, though we have to focus on Sri, Ch uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but we should also brief about various exponents like uh, uh, Kabir, uh, Mirabai, Guru Nanak, Adi Shankaracharya and Ramananda. So you have to give a list of exponents. No need to write a detail about these people. Okay. Next thing you have to give what is the nature and features of this bhakti movement in brief you should you should elaborate on what constitute the bhakti movement is next the content this is what the real demands of the question you should know you should write something about sri chaitanya mahaprabhu a brief lines about his early career then you should emphasize on his teachings this is an important area where you have to focus okay Next thing, how this his teachings helped in reorientation of the Bhakti movement. These are the two central points where you can elaborate much, much time. Okay. Next conclusion. In conclusion, you have to write how Bhakti movement at, uh, altered the socio-political landscape of the India. You can try to give uh, what you call the positive effects of this Bhakti movement. Okay. Now we will discuss the various aspects asked in this question through an answer written by a student. Now we will see what he wrote in the answer. Bhakti movement was a response from Hinduism to face new challenges brought by Islam. We knew that that Bhakti movement was a defensive response to counter the advent of Islam. This is what the important reason for the origin of Bhakti movement. It fought against the social evils and religious practices like polytheism. I think you know what is polytheism, worshipping of multiple gods, which is an important feature of Hinduism and emphasized on self purification and devotion towards God as means to achieve salvation. 
so he tried to give the origin for bhakti movement in the introduction and he also tried to give what actually what what are the actual contours of this bhakti movement now see this word salvation what is this salvation it's nothing but liberation and we all knew that salvation is an important concept in hindu tradition and in hindu philosophy of course similar concepts are there in other religions okay now see bhakti is not a new concept it is there since vedic times for example in shrimad bhagavad gita it was said that gnana means knowledge karma means action and bhakti means devotion these three are essentials to achieve salvation so in that sense bhakti is not a new concept right now next what he wrote the role played by the gurus in spreading the message of bhakti was a critical aspect in the movement why he wants to write this statement because the question is about asking the question is asking about sri chaitanya mahaprabhu so in bhakti movement or in this bhakti path the role a guru have is very crucial so is very important personality in achieving this bhakti path so now he wants to write something yes gurus played a very significant role in the bhakti movement so this is what he wants to write in introduction he started with something called origin and he gave the broad contours of what this bhakti movement is and the role played by the gurus in the whole process of bhakti movement okay now next thing he tries to give about the origin and spread of bhakti movement and also he gives the features of the bhakti movement in the second paragraph the movement originated in the 9th century ad in south india it was founded by adi shankaracharya and later the movement was carried forward by vaishnavite alvars and shaivite nainas very important group of people in south indian cultural history and they traveled from place to place singing hymns in tamil praising their gods for example alvars used to praise vishnu and nainas used to praise shiva and they also initiated a movement of protest against the caste system too and they want to uh, what do you call eliminate the dominance of brahmins and also they tried to reform the system the existing social system there next we will see it came to north india around 13th and 14th century here the prominent exponents of the movement were kabir nanak sri chaitanya mirabai of course you can add a list of exponents here for example you can write tulsidas you can write tukaram you can write about ramananda you can write about sorda so there are group of exponents list of exponents whom you can quote okay some features of the movement are monotheism and you know what is this monotheism which is an opposite of polytheism here devotion to god need for a guru to guide the devotee yes yes the guru was given a very important path in bhakti movement because he is the person who has to guide the devotee from a worldly path to a spiritual path and the next important feature of this bhakti movement is equality of men or universal brotherhood see this feature monotheism these are important or unique features of islam and we have discussed that bhakti movement is a response to counter the advent of islam so equality of men and universal brotherhood the islam religion have and they also practiced strict monotheism now hinduism or the reformers of hinduism they got attracted uh, attracted to these principles or to these features of islam movement now they denounced image worship of course it's an again important feature of islam movement self purification and self surrender so what is this devotion devotion is nothing but the divinity towards god and how you will get that divinity you will get that divinity towards god or divine love towards god through process of self surrender so self surrender is a very important aspect of bhakti movement now he discusses the second important component that was asked in the question about sri chaitanya mahaprabhu he gives the origin of this person and you know about his early career then he also speaks about the teachings and principles now we will see what he wrote the greatest saint of bhakti movement was sri chaitanya popularly known as gauranga mahaprabhu okay he was born in 4, 1486 ad at navadweep in west bengal as a student he mastered all branches of sanskrit learning so he gradually developed a sense of detachment towards worldly affairs so some basic uh, introduction about the early career of uh, sri chaitanya mahaprabhu at the age of 24 he renounced the world and became a sanyasi at a very young age and changed his name from nimai this is his childhood name to sri chaitanya okay 
he became an ad- adherent devotee of lord krishna and went on pilgrimage to various places like dwaraka vrindavan and mathura these places have a relationship with the life of uh, lord krishna and he died in 5, 1533 ad at pori okay now we will look into chaitanya mahaprabhu teachings he emphasized on divine love afo chaitanya's teaching centered round love for example from intense human love to divine love and everyone have access to divine love this is what makes chaitanya an egalitarian leader now he provided this access to the divine love to the, all the people which was not the case before and the second important contribution is he composed kirtanas in praise of lord krishna singing kirtanas chanting and dancing are the forms to achieve the highest spiritual order and means to achieve salvation so according to chaitanya mahaprabhu singing this kirtanas and uh, chanting god's name and dancing are the three important means to achieve the liberation or to achieve the moksha and another important contribution is chaitanya's rasa leela this is found mentioned in shrimad bhagavad gita is an important contribution to indian philosophy what is this uh, chaitanya's rasa leela says about it tells that if one faithfully hears shri krishna rasa leela and other past times of lord shri krishna with gopikas then one will no longer be agitated by maya and they will be no longer destroyed by lust and one will become very calm and peaceful this is what important preaching of chaitanya from rasa leela and he was a champion of social liberation yes he denounced caste system and because of this he got mass following and he stood for universal brotherhood of man and he opposed the domination of the priestly class though he might, he was a brahmin but he opposed the domination of the priestly class and the superfluous rituals and ceremonies because these are not the means to achieve salvation according to the bhakti movement what is the mean to achieve salvation it is completely de- devotion what is this devotion devotion has to be based on divine love and how this divine love will be achieved according to sri uh, sri chaitanya mahaprabhu that is through chanting god's name that is through singing kirtanas and also that is through dancing so through these three forms you will get divine love and through which you will get salvation he stood for truth and non violence his teachings were simple and with also a universal appeal so these are the important teachings of chaitanya mahaprabhu okay now he wrote another paragraph to see that how uh, the teachings of chaitanya mahaprabhu brought a reorientation in the bhakti movement his strong adherence to devotion which was not that much high when compared to the other exponents and the methods of chanting god name which is a new thing actually singing and dancing attracted huge number of masses yes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made bhakti movement a mass movement especially in regions of Bengal Bihar and Odisha his simplification of preachings and providing access to all attracted the down trodden class of course he teach he taught in vernacular languages too and also he provided access for divine love to all the classes especially the down trodden classes he was instrumental in making the movement a mass scale movement so this is what gave the bhakti movement a reorientation now we will see the last part of the answer that is the conclusion part we will see what he have written in this conclusion part bhakti movement with its emphasis on universal brotherhood and preachings through vernacular languages altered the socio political landscape of india yes very important observation because bhakti movement preached in vernacular languages it promoted regional languages so it resulted in or it brought in a change in the political landscape of india to a greater extent most of the south indian languages originated during the time leaving the tamil okay and this movement got universalized by its great greatest exponent chaitanya mahaprabhu the message of him is now propagated through iskon movement across the world so he tried to relate 
you know the bhakti movement to the alteration of the socio political landscape and he also tried to bring in chaitanya mahaprabhu and how he was instrumental in spreading bhakti movement to a large scale mass movement and he also tries to uh, you know look into the relevance of uh, sri chaitanya mahaprabhu preachings right now through this iskon movement so it is a balanced conclusion so his introduction is good and structuring of the answer is fine of course you can write you can elaborate on the teachings here he haven't elaborated much he gave some six or seven bulletin points but there you can elaborate because that is what the essence of the uh, question is and here where he tried to reorient how chaitanya mahaprabhu preachings reoriented the bhakti movement maybe you could have elaborated further on this paragraph because this is also a very important area other than that he tried to address various demands of the question now we will see a question for tomorrow's session how do you justify the view that the level of excellence of the gupta numismatic art is not at all noticeable in later times this question was asked in the year 2017 and it was asked for 10 marks and you have to write within 150 words so please make an effort to write an answer and please put it in the comment section and we'll be discussing the approach and how to write this answer in tomorrow's session so with that we have done today's discussion so thank you one and all